out in Denver, the very happy John Swigert, Dr. and Mrs. Swigert, to sent champagne around to their neighbors, to members of the press gathered on the lawn of their home in Dallas, and I suppose those corks are popping in the homes of the Hayes and the Lovells and everywhere else along Astronaut Row there in, outside of Houston. You'll see the real cheer go up, I assume, in mission control when they step aboard the carrier. That's, that's the moment when they light up the cigars, the old Chris Craft tradition established there with the first Mercury flights. helicopters, one of which is 66. When they get aboard, there'll be uh, greet, brief greetings from Admiral Davis, the commander of these recovery force, this recovery force, and uh, Captain Kirkamo of the Iwo Jima. The band will strike up a March version of Aquarius, which of course was the name of the lunar module. Uh, they were going to play the Fra Moro March, but especially for the occasion, but since the men didn't make it to Fra Moro, which was their target, it seemed a little inappropriate. Uh, they will be greeted, uh, I suppose say a few words, which is traditional, and then down to Sick Bay, where nine doctors will uh, examine them, punch at them, and uh, look at them, and take blood samples. And uh, then they'll get a chance to rest. Uh, probably we'll get a call from President Nixon. It's expected that they will. They'll get a lot of sleep before they get within helicopter range tomorrow of Pango Pango in American Samoa, some 540 miles northwest of where they are now. We'll be back with the return of the Apollo 14 in a moment. You are looking at the most unusual bridge ever built, made entirely of paper for the International Paper Company. The paper bridge was built to prove a point, that paper is strong. Paper also can be made waterproof, fireproof, and of course, paper is light in weight. The paper bridge, from the International Paper Company, where good ideas grow on trees. This is Walter Cronkite back at our CBS News Space Center where I just identified this as the flight of Apollo 14. Never one to believe that our space program will be in the slightest delayed, apparently, by the flight of Apollo 13 and all the problems. It will be. Apollo 14 probably will not go at the, in the fall of this year, as was originally scheduled. We're going to have to find out what happened to that service module on Apollo 13 first. It may be feasible, if they do identify it, uh, with a six months launch center that a remedy can be made that's reliable enough to go ahead and fly. It's very hard to keep this team together much longer than that. We really keep them sharp. You can see how sharp they were during yeah. the trying moments of Apollo 13. Recovery helicopter 66 approaching the deck of the Iwo Jima. Out there on the Pluto Pacific Pacific. There'll be no 
no masks today. And muffled words through those biologic isolation garments. Not necessarily. They just you know, came within 156 miles of the moon instead of landing on it. If they made the mission as scheduled, they would just now be linking up again with the command module flying over the moon after having walked twice on it. Instead, here they are back in the carrier, but they're glad to be there. I suspect their letdown, although this was a helicopter letdown, will occur some hours from now when they start debriefing on a technical basis, realizing that the debriefing forms are not right, uh, designed for a lunar return. There'll be a lot of engineering data that must be accumulated as soon as possible. And not only are the doctors punching in, but there's some engineers down below waiting with tape recorders to get some answers to fill in those gaps of knowledge. And do they do that before? They do that before they have a chance to rest. Well, we typically try to have a tape recorder available, even though the doctors are punching and probing, so we can get this information because it washes out of your mind so hurriedly. Incidentally, Mrs. Lovell, her Timber Cove, Texas home there by the Space Center, leaped to her feet when they were down safely, ran from one room to another, and shouted, I'm so relieved, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Marilyn did think so. I'm sure she's also pleased that she's got him down now for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know I saw quite a transition when it was, it was quite evident that I wasn't going to fly again. Really? So there is a tenseness. Oh, sure tension. there is. Salty. That's very good. <laughs> That's what they did. They got the blue suits. They didn't have those. Really. There's applause here in the control and cheer going on. Well, there they are. Jim Lovell in the lead. And then Swigert, isn't it? That's Jack, yes. Yeah, and then uh, Fred Hayes. Yeah. Okay, Somebody improvi improvised beautifully. They got patches and everything. I want to say just a sweet talk. Not just in my recovery for it, but oh, millions and millions of people all over the world. It undoubtedly has to be one of them. No. You ask me to refight. It's a happy moment. We're glad you could make it, boy. This is Gary Kirsten. Yep. I must commend you on your navigation. <laughs> Welcome on board Iwo Jima. I would uh, like to ask the uh, chaplain to say a real brief prayer of thanks. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we joyfully welcome back to Earth astronauts Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert, who, by your grace, their skill, and the skill of many men, survived the dangers encountered in their mission and returned to us safe and whole. We offer our humble thanksgiving for this successful recovery. Amen. Place over here. Now for some additional picture taking. By not only the professional photographers aboard, but also uh, a good many of them. on our monitor here that the men in mission control in Houston stood for that prayer as well. Just before then, Dr. Thomas Payne wrote a note of congratulations from the president to the flight controllers in Houston. Walking a little unsteadily there, Wally.
Moffat Field one time with the same period of time and knew each other up there. Oh, like in fact, Jim and I are in the same squad in there. train crew. Uh, uh, it is that. They're on the elevator there now. Uh, joking about those peers. Jim Lovell seemed to uh, be having some fun there with uh, with his beard. 